Please sit down. This is the coolest project of uh, Wikimedia chapters for 2017. Um, okay, this is better. This is the coolest project for uh, Wikimedia chapter for 2017. We want to present the coolest project done in order to in order to inspire you. Our goal is to give you ideas that can, you can do in other countries and, and see what other chapters are doing. So first a disclaimer, this is not all uh, chapters project. This is not even all the chapters. These are only the projects that some of the chapters sent to us, the chapter who answered our questionnaire, and we consider to be cool and low budget. So to emphasize, uh, only some of the projects sent to us either by, from the chapters or by you for our Facebook request uh, consider to be cool and low, low budget. So first of all, cool. What is cool? Cool is a big word. Oh. That's much better. No, yeah. So what makes a cool project? We have uh, two definitions which we are using. First uh, definition by Wojtech. It must be new, brave, cost efficient, and fun to talk about. Uh, and I always like the definition of Claudia Gerard from Austria. It must motivate existing volunteers, inspire newcomers, partners, and create added value for our project and foster collaboration in the movement, and I wish to add also outside the movement. Um, our program for today, first we'll present the coolest project done, then uh, the panel will choose, have chosen the finalists. We, we, Oh, sorry, let's try this again. We have the panel. We're going to discuss uh, communication, the effects of coolest projects on the communication of the movement, and how, uh, and vice versa. And then we'll see the finalists and we'll choose the coolest project, um, how the project is chosen. The chapters chose their own coolest project and sent to us. The panel chose the finalist, and the audience here will choose the winner. We are going to have a jury that will decide who gets the most votes. The jury is also chosen by the panel. Um, okay, I've been doing this lecture for five years now. Every year it is a new and different lecture because every year we have new and different projects. Um, every year I used to have one of my projects uh, as, as coolest projects because they're really cool. This year I do not. Um, and. For a minute, I, half a minute, I will explain why. This is a, like a personal note. This is our lecture last year. Daria was with me, and you see the jury from last year. Uh, I don't remember doing it at all. I must have been there because I'm in the picture. I think I'm in the picture. Uh, but uh, I completely don't remember it. Um, so my personal project this year, which is not a Wikimedia project, but a little bit, little bit cool, is as follows. The reason I don't remember this last year lecture is because uh, a week after the lecture, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor. That's the picture on the right. And two weeks later, they took it out, which is exactly one year from today, a year ago from today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Both pictures are now on Commons, CC by SA license, and in the Hebrew Wikipedia chapter. Well, at least something good came out of that. One of the odd side effects, you know the Turing test, which is supposed to detect artificial intelligence? When you go into Wikipedia and you forget your password, you have to do a captcha, put in the letters. I cannot see that anymore. So whenever I forget my password, I need a friend to come over and get me into Wikipedia. Usually it's Daria, thank you. Uh, that's an odd uh, side effect. So let's continue uh, with the order of business for today. The coolest project for 2017. These are projects done after 1st January 2016, and not before that. So let's start. Uh, I'm going to start with editatons. Um, we have two of those. The first one is from Hungary. This is an international competition, international editaton. You see the countries participating, seven countries, and it was several months in different dates in various countries. This is done to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the Hungarian Revolution of 1956. It is a writing competition in order to uh, improve of the articles in different Wikipedia languages about this revolution. Um, it was also a GLAM project. One of the largest uh, libraries in Hungary joined the project and held a 12 hours open editathon. And also uh, the University of Szeged participated with the library. 
Uh, this project helped uh, propagate the vision of the movement to this GLAM institution, and later other GLAM institutions wanted to do similar projects and similar cooperation with Wikipedia. So this really helped uh, Wikimedia Hungary to uh, share their view and get more uh, GLAM projects. Uh, the results are very impressive, sorry. You see over 100, 200 new articles, 11 uh, written, 11 articles expanded, 50 participants from seven countries. That's, these are very high numbers. Okay, our next project, also an article writing competition. This one is from Bangladesh, done by Wikimedia Bangladesh. Um, and a writing competition is part of the International Mother Language Day. It took place in February to March 2017. And it, many uh, uh, subjects, the articles were written on many different subjects. The results are pretty impressive. 300 new articles, uh, 20, 200 of them are quality articles. This is, means 70%, sorry, this is keep jumping, 70% new articles in a competition. This is, as far as I know, the highest percentage uh, of new articles that become featured articles, uh, which is very cool. This project was published through the Wikimedia Bangladesh website, social media, online news portals, and mailing lists. So that's the communication means that they use. Our next project is done by the Translation Task Force, Medical Translation Task Force. Sorry, you see their motto here, language shouldn't be a barrier for health information. This project had actually five parts. Um, the first part was getting the list of uh, essential medicine released from the World Health Organization under CC by SA license. The next stage is to bring this list to a featured list status in English Wikipedia. Then all 414 uh, articles in English Wikipedia were updated, so are, they are up to date. And the last part was to translate these individual, individual articles to many languages and also to Kiwix. One of the languages that the translation was done into was Odea, speaking by more than 30 million peoples. And this is the only information in the internet regarding those medicines. So people of those 30 million people who does not, does not speak English, which is a very high percentage, have access to this information for the first time. Again, very cool. This project helped to develop the movement relationship with the World Health Organization, and it was done in collaboration with the Uni University of California in San Francisco. Um, okay, the project was published uh, through social media and medical mailing lists. The tip that we got from the people doing this project is quite important. The key to translation is not to translate the entire article, but have the original article updated, just the lead information, the top 1,500 to 1,000 word. And when this part of the article is very good, you can translate that bit. You don't have to do the whole thing, but that's the best way to get information to people who have uh, no such information in the internet. Our next project is an outreach project um, done by Wikimedia Belgium, one of two projects that we are presenting today by Belgium, which means Belgium is a cool country. Um, the project is Sharing is Caring. Um, you see this, this is the picture of the project. It is actually a seminar held for cultural institution in order to convince them why it is important, oh, sorry, why it is important to work with the Wikimedia movement. This keeps jumping. Uh, the idea is to change the man's mindset, to change the point of view of this Islamic institution and uh, to bring the movement ideals into their way of operation. Because usually Glam operation wants to keep all the information to themselves and not share it. And we want them to understand that sharing, as the project name is, is caring. Sharing is actually the goal of this institution. And of course, it helps us bringing this knowledge to other people through these GLAM collaborations. So after we have changed the mindset of this institution, we'll go to GLAM projects. Oh, ah, yeah. uh, so our, um, oh, so you can, now you can hear me. Uh, our first uh, project, um, the Museum of Veterinarian Anatomy uh, from Brazil. Like, yeah, like this. 
Um, now, basically, they relicensed a lot of all their collection and uploaded it to Commons. Now, these are very unique pictures. First, they're very high quality. Uh, second, they're in veterinarian anatomy. So they're really hard to come by elsewhere. Actually, one of the slides we had was a picture of a dried up dead goat. Uh, and I vetoed it because it was really, really gross. But if you really want, if you're looking for uh, a picture of a dead goat, it's in the project, so you can look it up. Um, and uh, it was, it was very, very successful. It draw a lot of media attention. Uh, a lot of uh, people wanted to hear more about Glam projects, so much so that they actually are making a video to be presented in the museum itself about Glam. Um, because people couldn't hear enough about Glam. So uh, they really, really uh, just starting. They also shared it not just with the museum, but with the department in the university. And uh, it's ju that's just really just the beginning. Uh, our next project is from Switzerland, uh, Swiss Archive Day. They basically did a weekend where they opened up a lot of archives uh, all over the country. Uh, it uh, got a lot of media coverage, a lot of attention. Uh, a lot of people came and saw materials that were never seen by people because they were closed up and on, under lock and key. Um, this project is really nice on a few, a few aspects. First, uh, a lot of people got a chance to see materials that are usually not in the public eye, uh, things that were closed and the archive finally opened them up. So that's really, really nice. Um, basically, they draw attention to the purposes of the movement, open access, free knowledge. If anybody didn't know those terms until then, they do now. And that's a very impressive uh, result. Um, basically, they did edit-a-thons all over the country. As edit-a-thons go, they were really, really successful. They wrote a lot of new articles, hundreds of pictures were uploaded, and these are pictures that are rare and never before seen. So this, these are really good results. Um, also, three linguistic groups were participated. Uh, now, the last aspect I want to talk about is that they also created a lot of new GLAM projects. Basically, every archivist now wants to be a part of GLAM. So they really just started with one weekend. Uh, they were showing the archivists and curators how to edit Wikipedia, how to start their own GLAM projects. Uh, and a lot of the, these archives decided they wanted to join in. Uh, it was advertised in many channels, the press, social media, mailing lists. It had a lot of impact and success. And it really changed the mindset of uh, both archivists, curators, and the general public. Our next project is from Italy, uh, Paolo Monti on OpenStreetMap. Uh, Paolo Monti uh, was one of Italy's most important photographers, mostly uh, took pictures of architectural structures, such as this. Uh, they released, through a collaboration with the Information and uh, Culture European Library, they released his entire collection to Commons. Uh, it's 16,900 pictures. That's a lot. That's very impressive. I can basically just stop now. I don't have to continue. Um, but they actually did do more. Um, we always talk about open access and free knowledge, but what we're really talking about usually is come and share with our wiki projects, Wikipedia, Wikicommons, uh, the usual wikis we know. Um, but if a person is walking down the street and he sees this house, he's not going to start looking now in commons. You can also uh, geograph the locations in commons. So the information is really not all that uh, accessible and useful for people. It takes some amount of courage to say, OK, we need to find a new way to bring the information to the people when they need it, how they need it, with apps in their phones. So that's what they, that's why they did. They put all the a pictures also on OpenStreetMap. More than 8,000 were already geographed there, geo-referenced there. Um, 
And now people can just wander around the streets and look at pictures uh, of uh, Paolo Monti, uh, and that's very cool. Okay, we switch. Um, our next project is from Israel, the collaboration with the Israel News Company, one of two news companies in Israel. Uh, this is a continuation, I would say, for another project which was presented, another cool project which was presented a few years ago, where the reporters and presenters of the news channel wrote articles, and then it, they showed it as an items in the news, how they wrote the articles, what did they feel about it, and um, this project was very successful, so the news company wanted to do another project with Wikipedia, and they released under CC by SA 30 videos, which they actually edited from a lot of footage that they had. Um, this is the first time, as far as we know, that professional edited videos updated were uploaded to uh, Commons. Usually we have non-professional uh, videos done by Wikipedians or historical videos, but not edited, updated videos. These videos include aerial photos, news photos, things that usually we don't get. Uh, it's important to note that this was a, a big thing by the company because the company actually sells these videos to people who want to buy them for hundreds and thousands of dollars. So they gave us about $3 million worth of footage released on CC by SA. Um, these footages are, are sold, here they are combined and edited, but they are also sold separately for, separately for tens of thousands of dollars, this, therefore it's very valuable. Um, the Israel, this news company is the largest and most influ influential company in Israel, and they even, like this project, they want to continue collaboration with Wikimedia Israel. Um, I want, oh, we just said it, I want to give you an example of two of the videos. This is the video, for example, of Jerusalem. Okay, Daria, I need your help. Oh, there it is. It shows how the city looks like much more than we can see in static videos. You, you can see the people, you can get the feel of the city. Think about the current article, which if it doesn't have the video, what kind of things you would see in it, and how much it would be improved. It is improved once the video is in it. Okay. I'll show you, these, these videos are not only of Israel, but also of, of historical events, such as the, the signing of the peace treaty between Israel and Jordan, and also of, of places around the world. I'll show you another example. This one is from Japan, giving you the feel of what Japan looks like. Okay, yeah, it's working. This is something you cannot see from static images. And as you can see, it's very high quality. Uh, our next category of project is cultural and language preservation, which is, in my opinion, by definition, cool. All cu cultural heritage preservation projects are cool. This one is from Bangladesh, a, a, w, a, a photography a competition, such as WLM, one of two projects we'll present here today. Um, here we can see the winning photo from the competition. This is the first place. The second place, the third place. My personal favorite is the fifth place, this one. Um, this was the first time Wikilove's Monument competition took place in uh, Bangladesh. And it's uh, particularly cool because of the 452 archaeological sites in uh, Bangladesh, 350 were photographs. Again, very high percentage for just one year of competition. It was also important because the competition created partnership with the archaeological department of Bangladesh and the Bangladesh National Museum, and it enthusiasmed them, this uh, big important institution so much, the museum decided to share its collection on Wikipedia. Um, sorry. Yes. The tip that we received from Wikimedia Bangladesh, oh, there are numbers. Um, it was also especially unique because 
once the photographer reached its archaeological site, they find out that some of these sites were destroyed due to dilapidation, which means these are the last pictures that can be taken of these sites before they disappear. So that's the only way to preserve these sites. Um, the tip that we received from them is it's important to, partner, to have partnership with relevant government agencies, which may result in future projects and increase the output. Our next project is very similar to WLM, Wikilabs Public Spaces from Belgium, which is also particularly cool this year. This is an image of the Atomium, one of the most important modern buildings in Belgium. As you can see, it is censored because there was no freedom of panorama in Belgium. So you cannot take the picture without the architect um, wavering his copyrights or releasing the copyrights, or we need to wait 70 years from the architect's death, in which, which case he's alive, which means we would have to wait many more years, more than 70. What's unique about the project is that something changed in Belgium on the 15th of July, 2016. The law changed, and there is freedom of panorama, which means you can take pictures like this, and now we can really see what the building is like. Okay. This is a national icon in Belgium, and nobody could take pictures of it before that date. So what's particularly cool about the competition is that they, they use this change of law. And then the same day that the law came into force, they did a competition, taking pictures of many buildings. Uh, 262 images were uploaded. 262 may not seem like a large number, but think about it. A few hours before that, only zero pictures could have been taken. So if I do my math correctly, 262 divided by zero is an infinite increase in percentage, which makes it particularly cool. OK. Done. So our next project is from Spain. Wiki takes La Manchela. Um, think. Knights in shining armor, storming a castle with their swords and shields, and trying to take the castle on. Well, this is exactly what happened, except instead of swords and shields, they had computers and uh, cameras. Uh, La Mangella was an area that was in the wiki dark. Uh, it hardly had any articles about it. It hardly had any pictures in it. Uh, and they took it on. They covered it, they documented it, they wrote a lot of new articles. Uh, they took it out into the wiki light, which is very, very impressive. Um, 2,540 images were uploaded, 106 articles were created. Uh, a lot of them are in use, both in, the, in the Spanish wiki and also in other languages. Um, these are very, very impressive results. Um, uh, basically, what they, this is what we're actually talking about, a cool project, because it's fun, it's easy to do anywhere in the world, and uh, we're basically saying to everybody, storm away, charge castles, and have fun with it. Um, basically, their tip was, um, they said we, they tried to uh, go to the lo local government uh, establishments, and they got a no. And they tried again, and again, they got a no. And they tried again. And again, they got a no. Uh, and they decided to do it anyway. And after they did it anyway, everybody cooperated and everything just went really, really well. So basically, even if you get a no, do it anyway. It'll most likely work out. Uh, their second tip was local people. They have enthusiasm. They have passion. They have connections. Uh, good people to use as usual. Our next project is from Taiwan. Uh, a room of Wiki Women's own. It's uh, a women in red project. Um, basically, uh, there are a lot of Wiki uh, Wiki Women uh, um, projects around the world, and they found all sorts of good ways to get uh, women to e edit in uh, Wikipedia. But they didn't come with them with a magical solution. They said, "We can tell you how you create your own sacred Wiki Women space." Uh, you can decide how you want it and how you want to uh, create that space. One of them even uh, took, uh, basically drew what she thought was her uh, Wiki Women's own uh, room. 
you see it has a lot of hearts and it's very round and very pleasant. This is how a, the picture was drawn by Evangeline. This is how she sees that sacred space, in her opinion. Uh, each woman basically got uh, to design her own meetup. Uh, think of how empowering that is. Basically, you give women also a chance to imagine, see things their own way. Uh, basically, they came up with a lot of really interesting ideas. Uh, a really cool idea that they had was uh, basically to hire babysitters so that mothers can have the time to edit in Wikipedia. It's a cool idea because they were encouraged to use their imagination. Um, they had more than 20 meetups and a very wide uh, range of issues. Uh, 32 articles were written, 34 uh, pictures were taken, and they all reported there was a really, really uplifting experience. Uh, so uplifting, so they started collaborations with schools and education programs, um, and we're wishing them a lot of luck in uh, continuing. Uh, our next project is also from Israel. We have a few countries here that did a few projects, so very cool for them. Uh, the picture is an educational photography contest. Um, now, basically, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, photography contests that we have. We have a lot of activities in schools, uh, but usually the activities in schools is writing articles. Uh, they don't usually have schools of photography uh, doing a contest among themselves. So they basically took two high schools that major in photography, and they basically competed between themselves. Um, basically, the students worked really hard in the pictures. They got really professional results, uh, which are really hard to come by, and so it's really wonderful that they were able to do that. Um, uh, basically, a few emphasis uh, were uh, given to the students. Uh, first, the professional side, the pictures had to be good, high quality. They worked with their teachers, they worked with professional photographers until they were able to get really, really high, impressive pictures, uh, such as this one. Look at it, it's an amazing picture. Um, basically, the other thing that they, they basically uh, put emphasis on is the encyclopedic quality. They tried to, to choose our, uh, entries that didn't have a picture or had very few pictures or really needed a picture to illustrate a point. They got credit for the encyclopedic value. And uh, another point that they uh, told the students is please try to be as, uh, you be, as, you be as much as diverse as you basically can. You have this picture uh, of a woman labyrinth and until now, the, pic uh, the picture in the entry was only of a man. So they basically tried to take pictures of women to close the gender gap, uh, of people that don't, minorities, people that don't actually usually have a picture repre to represent them in Wikipedia. They tried to do, to try to be as diverse as they possibly can. Um, after they did the competition, we had about 200 pictures. Uh, and they did a really nice gallery in the street in Ramat Hasharon. Uh, this is a major street in Ramat Hasharon, and they put here, here you can see the pictures of the gallery, all the pictures there. You have the picture, and you have um, the, basically a small uh, part of the Wikipedia article that they basically used for the picture, and a QR code. So people can just walk down the street, and a lot of people do that because it's a main street, and see the pictures, read the articles, go into Wikipedia, see what it's about. Now think how proud the students are. You see them standing next to their uh, pictures. They, their parents and uh, family and friends basically all came to see them standing next to the picture with, uh, you can see all of them really, really excited. And the municipality was really, really excited. Uh, they basically did an opening ceremony that was very, very nice, and it generated a lot of good feelings. Um, Aliel, who basically did the project, had a few tips. He said, uh, not everybody has uh, the ability to write. We all have our own passions. We all have our own uh, qualities. We all have that one thing that we can do really, really well. The key is to find that one thing, that one thing that we're passionate about, and use it 
for our movement. If we can do that, the sky is the limit. Uh, the, also, he also said, engage the community. They had a lot of help with the municipality. They got an exhibit in the center of the city. Everybody sees it. It gets a lot of exposure. It has a lot of benefits, and you should try to engage the community as much as you can. Our last project is also from Brazil. Uh, you remember the veterinarian anatomy museum from before? Uh, well, it was so successful that they decided to do the project in 60 more museums in that area with, uh, the, with that university, the Sao Paulo University. Um, now, basically a lot of university have, has uh, courses in Wikipedia, they teach how to edit Wikipedia, they, uh, they basically ask the students to write a Wikipedia articles. This, this actually happens uh, quite often in a, all over the world. Here, they basically, you know that first year course that everybody has to do of methodology? That's really, really boring. You have to learn where the library is and how to download academic journals and all those things. Very boring. Here, they basically put how to use wiki as a source in the course. So think of any academic procedures that these students will do will be through wiki, will be connected to wiki. So this is very meaningful. Um, they learned the value of Web2, of open, uh, open access, of uh, free knowledge. Um, and it's, uh, it basically has good results. Uh, 31 new ar articles, um, 143 new editors, which is a really nice number. Uh, and six museums basically is, are already started a GLAM project. Uh, I need to say that all the, quality, the, all the materials are really high quality and are of unique uh, pictures and substance. Uh, I always like to end the sh description of the project with this inspirational quote by Eleanor Roosevelt. Nothing has ever been achieved by the person who says this cannot be done. And I think that's actually the motto of what we are trying to say here. I know that personally I want to take some of these projects back to Israel with me, with me and try them. Um, as they are all cool and all very uh, easy to do. We don't need much funds to do them. Okay, now we'll have a panel about uh, communication and how it's related to these projects. I want to call up the panel members. First, Juliette Barbara, the communication directors of the Wikimedia Foundation. Please. Uh, Itzik Edri, the, board, uh, the chair of the board of Wikimedia Israel, whose J day job is in PR and is truly a PR expert. <laughs> Michael Jan, head of communications and partnership in Wikimedia Deutschland. <laughs> and Maria Cruz, the communication and outreach project manager for the community engagement at the Wikimedia Foundation. And the one with the longest title. <laughs> okay, we're going to ask the panel a few questions. You have the mic, I hope it's working. Yannick, it's working? Yeah. Um, the first question is, how can a cool project assist the chapter or the Wikimedia Foundation in its outreach and fundraising? So just uh, start, whoever wants to start. Well, I would reframe the question a little bit to be how can we work together um, towards common goals? And um, I think that we have some really good examples of projects where, um, you know, my, my perspective would be from the foundation of projects where um, a chapter-led or community-led project um, coordinated with the foundation to promote um, the project. And so, we would, for example, we worked with the Arden Feminism Group to get a ton of press about um, that initiative in the US. We've worked with um, our Iraqi community to, get, uh, to do a launch event and press around a recent Wikipedia Zero launch that was started by an Iraqi Wikimedian. And, um, and so I, I would really think that it's a partnership and that um, there are, when it makes sense and when we can help each other achieve goals, like let's work together, let's collaborate. Um, and, but I know that the chapters um, also are a great resource for that collaboration and in many cases probably better than the foundation. 
I think such project can bring awareness to the work that the chapter and the community does because a lot of people see Wikipedia as an online encyclopedia. They know the product that we uh, offer online. They don't know that we're doing a lot of job and a lot of activities and outreach work outside of the online world and collaborative with a lot of organization and doing an amazing and cool uh, things. And also the ability to bring uh, these things outside, for example, uh, uh, the project that Ro mentioned, uh, uh, the photo photography project in Israel, that suddenly you can walk on the main street in, it was Ranana? Ramat Sharon. Ramat city. And to see a picture from Wikipedia, to see the logo of Wikipedia and to understand that we are doing something much more than writing an online encyclopedia. And maybe, maybe um, just adding what I found really impressive these, this, these last 30 minutes or so. So the two of you, um, Dara and uh, Daria, you were so passionate um, talking about these projects as if all of them were your own. Um, so that was really impressive. And that kind of has to do with the question for me. Um, yes, cool projects can definitely help with uh, outreach. For instance, if you talk about them. I mean, it's still, um, when you talk, not only to the press, but to people who are not familiar with the Wikimedia movement, um, you can uh, talk to them about free knowledge and what it means. And it's not always that simple to understand uh, to many people, but when you um, tell them stories, like, and I consider these projects cool stories too, um, like people storming a castle, uh, going all over a place, uh, taking pictures, um, coming up with uh, crazy edit-a-thons and stuff. Um, the, p people can really relate to that and, th and they feel that there's really people involved. And it happens to this day that people in Germany and I'm sure in other places still ask uh, us, really, is it really run by volunteers, Wikipedia? Can't be possible, and it is. Uh, so having a story and a, such a cool project that you can um, explain um, really helps with creating understanding and outreach. So uh, to add to what all of you said, um, I think a project is a very concrete way of explaining a complex idea, which is what Jan, uh, sorry, <laughs> Michael, uh, Michael was saying. Um, and uh, talking about it, uh, not only uh, creating a, a good uh, story or a blog, but also documenting the process, I think is, uh, is good to collaborate uh, with other user groups or chapters or thematic organizations, uh, explaining to others how uh, you did the project and what worked. And I saw a lot of that in the presentations today uh, with tips uh, on uh, for specific projects, uh, what has worked for the project organizers. And I think that is key, uh, reflecting back on why, why things worked uh, is, is, is key for other affiliates to be able to do similar experiences in outreach programs. Okay, the next question is relating to the, this one and to what Michael said. When planning a project, you don't know it's necessarily going to be cool, but what would be done to enable the, uh, the outreach or the fundraising uh, in, in the planning stage? Um, I think it's really important that um, if you... To, to be clear, if you really want to do this, I mean, not doing the project itself, because obviously you want to, because it's fun to do, but do you want to create outreach? Do you want to reach other people? Um, and if you do, um, I suggest it would be really cool to be as simple as you can about it. Test the idea. Maybe just explain it to somebody in your family and tell them to be really honest with you, not to tell them they understand, uh, or tell, tell a complete stranger about it. And if they un don't understand the problem, um, and not the problem, the project, uh, if they don't understand it, then work on it, make it more simple. Um, that helps. Um, yeah. I think, I think that, uh, the project that you uh, presented, each of them g gave a different a way to people to participate. Some of them gave an online opportunity to people to join and take part of the project. Some of them invited people to come to the museum, to come to, to an event to participate. And some of them even shows uh, the outcome of the project outside to the community, in the online world, on the press, in a different place. And some of them even combine all of them. And I think that's what can make the project and to increase the outreach when you uh, uh, give 
a different opportunity to people to engage and to consume the, the, the outcomes of the project. I think the message of keeping it simple is really important. We even have an exercise um, that we use sometimes where when you're developing a new product or a new project, start by writing the press release. Or you could even just write the press release headline. See if you can get it in one sentence. And if it makes sense, good. Go build it. But if you can't, then maybe there's some simplification that might need to take place, um, which also relates to having clear goals. Um, it helps a lot if you can articulate your goals clearly because then you can use communications um, to support those goals. Uh, you know, ideally, communications is, is really a part of helping you achieve what you do want to achieve, whether that's creating new partnerships with local institutions or inviting Wikimedians um, or new community members to join you in the future. Yeah, to, to add to that, uh, uh, yeah, is uh, keeping it simple and also understanding what is in it uh, for other people, especially if you're interested in outreach and community engagement, uh, and understanding how the other person can relate to your story. Uh, so I, I was thinking I had to explain to my grandma uh, my job. And how do I start? Because she, yeah. <laughs> She didn't know what Wikipedia was. She doesn't have internet. And so I started by saying, uh, when you were studying, uh, do you remember uh, you had an encyclopedia? And she said, yes. And somebody wrote that encyclopedia, and, and you read it at home. Now everybody can write an encyclopedia. And so you start with a very simple idea and take it on from there. OK. Uh, I'm going to ask you the next two questions together and add another question, which is not on screen. Uh, what PR tips, oh, sorry, things keep, help me, Daria. Okay, this is complicated. Thank you. What PR tips do you have that would make a project successful? Uh, how do you communicate a project in the digital media world? And what, is, what are the best ways to use social media before, uh, during, and after a project? And is, is there a difference between these three st stages and the use of media? It's a start. <laughs> oh, yeah. Michael. Okay, many okay. questions. Uh, maybe about, about those p um, p PR tips. Um, once again, I think if you want to make a project and you, if you want to contribute to fr uh, the free knowledge movement, then that, that is in and of itself totally great. Um, but if you want really to reach people, reach the press, um, or um, tell people what, what you do, then um, I would give three tips. Um, the first one, you can either start um, with defining a problem. Problems are, problems are always good for people to report about them, journalists. So um, they're not, in my uh, opinion, not very much interested in really cool, great things um, if, when everything is okay. I mean, they have a duty to um, talk about issues, problems, bring them to the surface, so they like a good problem. And when you say there is something like, for instance, uh, um, Wycliffe's Monuments, I think, still has one of those, uh, has a great quality to it because it says there are th those monuments. Sometimes they will disappear. This is our heritage. We need it. And if we don't uh, take pictures of, the, of them, they will be gone. This is w one version of a problem. So if you have a problem, that, that's good, um, that you want to solve. Another thing is it doesn't always need to be a problem. Second tip would be um, maybe, maybe there's just something that everybody's talking about. Um, on social media or elsewhere, and um, you, you always need to be yourself, but if you think, ah, I can connect to this, or there's some internet meme going around, or whatever, um, if it's fun, then uh, integrate that. That could, could be something. Or third and final tip, um, if you have something completely new, something that's never been done before, um, it's not easy to find something, but if you have that, um, that's really cool too. I would add if you are partnering with an institution like a government agency or a GLAM organization, um, find out if they are interested in working with you on PR. You know, they, it may be in their best interest to do some promotion around a really great partnership that um, made them more open. And so that's a really good way, you know, if you don't, for example, have PR expertise um, or if you don't 
have the kind of um, resources like an organization might have, they may have their own PR agency. Uh, see if they might be interested and they may say, no, it's not our priority right now, but if you could make the case for why this is a really good message for them to tell to their communities, then you get to help them spread the message of openness um, with their networks as well. I would add to that, uh, think of your data point. Uh, so is there a, a, a piece of data that really describes your story well? Um, data is uh, really hot right now, like <laughs> like Hansel. Um, so for example, if you, if you were working on the gender gap, it would be something like only 15% of uh, Wikipedia editors are women. Uh, I can't remember exactly if that's true, but something like that. That's a, a data, sorry? It, okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, and data also helps you uh, to create good visualizations which are very attractive. So that's another uh, good uh, tip to, to pitch uh, stories to reporters. I can agree that numbers are important. Press love numbers, so if you can collect numbers, for example, statistics or facts, why you decided that this project is important or uh, statistics from uh, the, the project outcome, for example. Uh, and also try to find uh, a, f try to find a story, an interesting story, a personal story that can be related to one of the participate uh, in the project or one of the pictures that you released. Uh, because, as you mentioned, the things that we see as cool are not really cool uh, by the press. So they uh, then need to to publish something that will be interesting to the people to read, and stories can be uh, a lot of time, things like that. Okay, uh, because of what you just said, I want to switch the order of the last two questions. Uh, first, is it possible that uh, media coverage should become a parameter in determining the success of a project? Um, and should it be, become a parameter? Not if it's, only if it's possible, but, but do we want it as a parameter? Maybe we can fight about this, um, because we all agree on everything. Um, it, yeah, it's possible. Um, I mean, you can, you can uh, make media coverage a parameter in determining projects. I don't think you should. Um, first of all, and again, it should be about fun, about, about um, having a good time and contributing to, uh, to Wikimedia projects, um, and then kind of Aiming for um, success outside, reaching people is, is great, but don't put yourself under stress there. And it's really, it's really hard to um, to estimate media coverage. There's so many factors involved. Like it's except um, um, journalists, they they are under a lot of stress. They need to write stories or uh, present things which they think their readers like. Um, and even when you do great work, and it would be a great story, it can still happen that nobody writes about it. Um, and that would be sad if um, you kind of try too hard to integrate that into your project, in my opinion. Um, I, from the grant making perspective uh, at the foundation, I would say that this depends on the goals that you set for your project. So if you have as a goal, um, to generate more engagement uh, or increase outreach in your community, and you do that through media coverage. Um, media coverage is uh, actually the, the result of, of reaching out to media. It's it's an output, let's say. Uh, what you're actually, what what does that get you in return? Do you have more partners calling you, wanting to to do a project together with you? Are there more people trying to become members of your association? Um, so it can be a parameter, uh, but I would say it depends on what goals you, you set for yourself. Maybe your goal is to change the, the, the value of the, uh, not the value, like the, the appreciation of the press, ha that the press has uh, on your language project Wikipedia, uh, from negative to positive, and, and you, you can measure that, but it depends on what goals you, you set for yourself. I think that uh, the vision or uh, uh, the, how to pronounce it, uh, 
Each spokesperson or communication manager will love that every project will pass through him, through uh, his department, as every uh, project passed through legal uh, in big organization. Uh, but I think when you look on Wikipedia, this is not the case. Most of the project that you presented, I think are pure community uh, project uh, that even been done uh, by, chap by a small chapter that probably doesn't even have a spokesperson or communication manager. And what makes this project really unique and cool is maybe the fact that no one interfere or uh, uh, try to look for the way how the project will look on the press or how to outreach this project, by, but truly do the, the thing that the specific volunteer think it's the best for Wikipedia. I agree with all of that. Nothing Good. to add. Um, the next question is, we'll start with Itzik. Um, how can we engage the media to participate in the project? Not just media coverage, but actual participating. <laughs> that's, an, that's a hard question, Dror. Uh, and you're asking me that because I was involved with the project of Channel 2? <laughs> uh, I think in, at the end, uh, media is like every other uh, glam organization. Uh, they look at the end for the credit or uh, you know, the way that we will acknowledge that we participate with them and their content, it's worth something. So you need at the end to think what you can bring back to, the, to your partner, to the media, in order, him for, for, in order for him to release content or part, per, per partnership with you. Yeah, This is a big question. You could answer at so many different levels. Um, I know that in the strategy conversations, we have invited uh, leaders in media to tell us what they think about the future of free knowledge and the future of Wikimedia. And, um, you know, they are right in the middle of this debate about misinformation, um, the sustainability of uh, reliable, uh, reliable information online. Their entire industry is under um, a very dramatic disruption. And, uh, and so th I think that at a very high level, they are th thought partners for us. And in many ways, we share similar goals. Uh, I think that they, I have heard a lot of interest that they want to sort of join our movement. I don't know what that looks like. It probably looks like a lot of different things, including glam style partnerships. Um, but I, I see it as a huge area of opportunity. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't really have uh, a lot to add. I, would, I, I agree a lot with Itzik. Uh, we should consider them as another glam. Uh, they have a lot of content uh, that could be released under free licenses and used as sources, for example, on uh, Wikipedia. Um, yeah. I uh, maybe just to add, um, with the individual people, I think it's simple. I, I'm, I'm, I know that this is not what, what the question um, is about, but I, I know a couple of people um, from the media business who are passionate Wikipedians um, or taking taking pictures and contributing to comments, so they are there. When it but when it comes to the um, to the media business, um, I think it's, we stand a much better chance with public media, publicly funded media, because they uh, in, in in most countries um, they have a commitment to um, to serve serve the people and they are funded by the government by taxes so um, they are kind of they have the duty to give back um, so and that is a basis um, to talk with them with privately owned media that's a lot harder I think oh I see there's a question for the panel there is a microphone just behind you yeah yeah I think it does. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to add to that I'm Daria from Wikimedia UK and we did with the foundation, actually, a big project last year uh, with the BBC, uh, British Broadcasting Organization, uh, called uh, BBC 100 Women. And my kind of two takeaways from that is that even though that's a publicly funded organization, it was incredibly fast moving, like much more. There were similarities with GLAMS, but they were very fast moving, like within a day, things were uh, changing. So that's good, it was refreshing, it was a challenge also. 
and um, they were much more focused, kind of in a business-like way, uh, than some glamps or education. So that's my reflections from that. I want to add to what you said because we also participate in this project in Israel because we arrange an editon to the BBC reporters in Israel. So we teach them how to edit and they edit you know, articles that related to women in communication in Israel. And I think this, this is also something that you, we can give and the media can participate, that we can teach them and we can bring them uh, more knowledge and uh, opportunity to participate uh, within our project. And I would add that I, I always try to remind myself that um, the media landscape differs dramatically from one country to another and one region of the world to another. And you know, in, in some places where uh, public media may be very strong or, or just general media may be reliable and trusted, in other parts of the world it may not be trusted at all. Um, or you may have a place like India where newspapers are, I think, the second largest source of media. Um, it, one of the only places in the world where newspapers are on the rise. Um, or countries you know, around the world where radio is a critical way to share news. And so when we have these discussions about PR, I think it's important to think about the diversity of, of the media itself. Uh, just to add a, a small thing to all of that, um, Dario's example of the campaign is really great. And it's a way of participating in the projects that is becoming more and more popular, I think, since 2015, uh, holding a, a global campaign. And uh, for the case of the BBC, it's a global broadcasting network. So uh, journalists usually also uh, work on campaigns and uh, promoting certain uh, high-level idea, um, there are a lot of um, parallels uh, or similarities with the way that uh, campaigns are done in the Wikimedia projects uh, with editatons. Uh, so that's another way of engaging uh, media as well okay. as you. contributors. Let's thank the panel. Don't go yet. Thank you very much. We knew. That's the part you need to do this for the panel. Uh, now we're going to choose the coolest projects. We're going to show you the runner-ups chosen by the panel. Each panel member could choose one. Um, we have five runners up. Do not vote yet. We will vote in two minutes. What I do ask is that if somebody is the head of such a project, if you can stand up and come to the front so people can ask him questions. Uh, I know that the head of one project is not here, um, but the rest should be here. So we have five runners up. Um, the first one is Wiki, the Translation Task Force of Wikimed. Second one, Wiki Loves Monument of Bangladesh. The Educational Photography Contest from Israel. We are not voting yet. <laughs> Wiki Takes La Manchela from Espana. And the Israeli News Company Collaboration. Okay, now it's time to vote. Uh, panel members, listen up, see if who gets the most noise. Um, OK, we're starting to vote. Now, who thinks this is the coolest project? OK, thank you. OK, Wiki Loves Monument, Bangladesh. The Education Photography Contest. Wiki Take La Manchela. and the Israeli News Company collaboration. Okay. Let me ask what they think. We never had this before, but we have a tie between three projects, so we're going to take a second vote. Uh, three are, uh, 
Okay, this one, the first one, Wikimed. Very good. Second one is La Manchela. This is really difficult. And the last one is the Israeli news company. Okay, I'll ask them again. Okay, we still have a tie, but between two projects. <laughs> this is the third place, the Israeli news company. Um, the tie is between Wikimed and La Manchela. So be as loud as you can for the one you like. We'll start with Wikimed. Okay, and La Manchela. You're making it very difficult. Yes. The reason we are not using an audiometer is because it's really easy to cheat those. So we think this is. Uh, draw or Wikimed. Okay. So the winner is. Wikimed. Wikimed. Okay. Excellent. Ah, it's, a shame that Do it's a shame that Doc James isn't here. He was here for the beginning, but he has another talk about this right now, so he had to present it there. Uh, we will tell him. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, this is Wikipedia, so we have to thank all those who answered the questionnaires, and of course, give all the credit for all the pictures used. Yeah, we must show that. Yeah. And please, a big round of applause for you too for doing this. this is great. Thank you.